Hey, what's up everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we looked at how we can set up our Selenite project as well as how we can set up our first test. In this video, we will learn more about how we can work with different elements in Selenide. So the test we're going to be writing is, it's going to be pretty simple. We will come to the same page, practice.automissionbro.com. We're gonna click on the get started button now, in order for us to click on this button, we need to interact with this button. And we haven't looked at how we can interact with buttons or different elements in Selenide. So the very first thing we will do is find this button and we're going to do it in different ways. So we will try to find a button using the ID. So I'm going to click on this button. We'll try to find it using ID. And then I'm going to verify my URL at the top that the URL is actually changed and get started link is actually at the top. So that's the first assertion we're going to have and the first test. Next thing we're going to do is we will try to find this text right here. We will get this text, but we will use this time not an ID. We will use a CSS selector. So we will try to do a different stuff here. We will work with ID here. We're going to work with CSS selector. We will verify our text. Once we have done that, we're going to try to verify this logo at the top. And this one, we're going to do it using XPath. So pretty much at the end of this video, you will have experience on how to work with IDs, how to work CSS selector, as well as how to work with XPath in Selenide. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's get started. So to begin with, we need to first start off with our get started button. So I'm going to right click on this and do inspect. And then here I'm going to select my button. Over here, you're going to see that we have an ID which is get started right over here. So this is the ID that we're going to be interacting with. So the first thing we're going to do is find element using get ID. And then we're going to get this ID, then we're going to click on this, and then we will simply verify that our URL actually has get started over here. So to verify that, we're simply just going to go to practice.automation.com and make sure we have this get started at the end of our URL. So let's go ahead and start writing our test for this one. So I'm going to head over to IntelliJ. And this was our previous test file that we created in our previous video. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to go to that video first and then take a look at how we set up our project as well as our Selenite test. From this video, the assumption is that you have already done that. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new test. So to create a new test, I already mentioned it to you. You can either do a right click and do generate or use the shortcut, which is command N or control N. So I'm going to use the shortcut here. I need a test method and this will get generated over here. So in this test, I'm going to be interacting with elements. So I will just add that as my test name interacting with elements. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is how we can interact using ID. So basically this is by ID. Now before I do that, I got to make sure that I'm opening the page URL. So I'm just going to copy this over here and I will paste it over here. Now I know we're kind of duplicating this effort here, but don't worry about this. We're going to refactor it and fix this later on in the later part of the videos. All right, now I have to work with my ID here. So the ID that we have for that particular element is actually get started. So in order for us to interact with an element in Selenide, they provide you with a really easy option. All you have to do is just add in a dollar and then you have to add it your brackets. Now within bracket, as you can see, it's asking me what do I need to do? So I need a web element, CSS selector or Selenium selector, what I need to put in there. So I'm just going to say I need to do by dot and then I can put in what I'm trying to do here, by.xpath, by.css selector, or by.id. In this case, we are doing by.id, and then I need to add in my ID. So the ID is get started. Now remember, you're not adding the pound sign there for the ID. That's actually not required, because if you do that, now this is a CSS selector, which we're going to be covering later on. For now, all you have to do is simply just add in by.id, get started. Now, what action do you need to take on this? So in this, I got to make sure I'm clicking on this, right? Because we have that button and we have to click on that button. So I'm going to do dot click. And that's it. That's pretty much how you can go ahead and interact with your element. So the main interaction part that we are doing is actually happening here We're using dollar by ID and then whatever the ID name you want to put in over there. After that is the action you're taking on that particular element. And that can be anything you want. In this case, we are doing dot click. So you go ahead, find your element using dollar and whatever you want to do, ID, CSS, XPath, put in that selector over here. And after that, take your action on that element. All right, now the next thing I need to do is once I have click on this, I have to verify that the URL actually contains get started. Because if, if you notice over here, right now the URL does not contain get started. So that's going to be my assertion. So I will just add in verify 
URL contains. Now for that, we haven't looked at this assertion. We have been doing assert equals, but there's another assertion I can use, which is assert true. Now within assert true, I can just say URL contains get started. But for that, I have to get my URL. And if you remember from our previous video, we get the URL by simply doing string URL, webdriver runner.url. So I'm just gonna copy paste that. And over here, I'm gonna add in URL dot contains. And then I'm gonna say, what does it contain? So I'm gonna say that, hey, it should contain this get started string right here. And that's all. That's pretty much my assertion or that's pretty much my test for this particular scenario where we are going and finding the element using ID. And then we are verifying that the URL contains get started. Let's try to run this to make sure this works. And then we're gonna move on to our other element such as um, finding element by CSS selector as well as finding element using XPath. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna do run this particular test. All right, so we just ran and as you can see, our test successfully passed over here. So that's perfect. So that means our test is working. And if you want, you can fill the test to actually see what the error message you will get. But for now, I will not do that. We have actually covered that in our previous video already. So the next thing we're gonna do is how we can work with CSS selector. So for that, I'm gonna head back to Google Chrome again. And the text that we're gonna be interacting with is going to be this particular text right here. And if I just select this, this is an h1 class so i have an h1 so that's the tag i'm going to be working with h1 and then i'm going to copy this text because this is the text we're going to verify and i'll head back to intellij and here add in my new comment and i'm just going to say verify or basically i'll just say by css selector or maybe let's say verify heading by css selector same thing as before i'm going to do dollar and i'm going to add in my bracket and I can technically just do by.css selector, but in Selenite, it's smart enough where it actually knows what you're trying to do specifically for CSS selector. So let's say if I just put in my selector here, see right away, it actually says, hey, that you're trying to use a CSS selector. And I actually pasted this wrong. This shouldn't be this. It should just be an H1. That should work. And if you want, you can be more specific. You can do H1 dot whatever the element um, ID is or the class there is. For now, I think H1 should work. If it doesn't, we're gonna keep it specific. Now here, I want to verify that it should have text, right? So we haven't looked at how to work with different text methods. So it's pretty easy to do with Selenide. I'm gonna do dot should have. Should have is another type of conditions with Selenide. So if I add in that, it's gonna ask me what should I need to verify? I'm gonna say I need to verify text, right? Obviously when you enter that, it is asking, all right, what is your text? So the text is was basically what I copied. So this whole thing, this is the text I want to verify. Now remember this should have is actually coming using the um, conditions over here, which is selenite conditions right here. If you do not have that, you the should have would not work. So this is where it's coming from. Now I'm doing dollar $h1 should have text, blah, blah, whatever it is. All right, so I can run this as well and this should work as it is. So let's just quickly make sure this works. All right, our test successfully passed even for this one, awesome. So just to quickly wrap it up, for CSS selector, you don't have to provide by.css. When you actually add in the text, it's gonna by default note that you're actually working with CSS selector because that's the default option it takes. But for ID and XPath, you have to be explicit and you have to mention that you're working with ID or you're working with XPath. So since we're already talking about XPath, that's the next thing we're gonna look at, how we can work with XPath. Now for that particular test, I'm going to be verifying my logo link right here. So I'm gonna go over here and actually copy the logo link. So for that, I actually have this class called custom logo link. And if I search for that, this is actually unique. But if you remember that we are actually working with an XPath here, so I need to develop my XPath. So for that, let's just quickly develop our XPath here. So I'm gonna do two forward slash, and then we are working with an anchor link. So I'm gonna do A. And then I will add in my class. So the class we are working with is our custom logo link. So I will just do custom dash logo dash link. All right, the moment I did that, you can see it's highlighting right over here. And that's my basically XPath that I just created. All right, so I'm gonna copy this and head back to my IntelliJ again. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new comment. This time I'm gonna say verifying by XPath. Same as before, I'm gonna do dollar. And within dollar, I'm gonna add in 
this time by dot xpath and then i'm going to paste in my xpath maybe i simply want to verify that the logo is visible on the screen so i'm going to do dot should be visible it's pretty nice because if you notice it's actually automatically filling all this in for me and it's way more readable compared to using let's say old style because here you can just think right here i'm trying to do by dot xpath i added literally my xpath and what do i want to do i need to be verified that it should be visible all i have to do is just do dot should be visible and then it's actually added over there similarly for this i'm making sure that my h1 should have text this so it's just like plain readable english and it makes your code really easy to write so this was one of the primary reason that i really liked um, javascript frameworks specifically let's say cypress or webdriver io because the syntax is such um, human friendly and it's easy to read that even someone who does not know coding can understand what's happening here and that's the best part with Selenite as well. They have made it so simple that it exactly looks like human readable language and you can literally go through the code step by step and understand what's going on. Okay, so let's try to run this now. The whole thing should work. So I'm gonna click on run. Perfect, we just ran the whole thing and it worked successfully, awesome. Just to kind of show it to you that this is actually working, I'm gonna fail this test. I will add in the wrong xpath and I'm gonna run this. This is not necessary. I'm just showing it to you to actually, because since it was so quick, I wanted to make sure that, hey, this is actually working. If I add in a wrong selector, it's gonna fail. And as you can notice that this time it's taking more long to for that particular um, browser to go away. And we got an error right here. And if I take a look at the error, it's gonna say, hey, I was trying to verify, let me just zoom in. It's saying I was element not found by xpath, this particular thing, because I added a S over there and it's obviously not there. So it was saying the expected was it should be visible, but of course it was not found because that element wasn't even there on the DOM. So that's kind of the reason. And obviously they have a screenshot and page source, all of that. We'll cover that later on. So in this way, at least we know that our assertions are working, our test is fine. And pretty much to quickly wrap it up for you guys, in order for you to work with different elements in Selenide, all you have to do is you have three ways. You can do it through ID, through your XPath, through CSS selectors. These are the most common ways you're gonna be working with. Um, for ID, simply just do by.id and put in your ID name. For your CSS selector, you simply have to add that in over here, basically this part right here. You just say, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, just add in your CSS selector and by default, Selenide will know that you're working with CSS selector. And same thing, finally, for XPath, you just say you're doing by.xpath and add in your xpath over there and it will recognize that yes you're working with xpath so that was a quick introduction with how elements work with selenide we're going to be working with more elements in the upcoming videos but for now that's it for this video guys if you'd like to support my work please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button on this video and you could also support me by sharing this video with others so thanks for watching guys i will see you all in the next one